Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brett Norman YouTube channel. Today, I have Michael in Germany, and he's going to bring us the Science is the New Religion script on this February 4th, 2023. And Michael, how are you doing? Thanks for introducing, Brett. Uh, yeah, thanks for asking. I'm doing uh, quite fine at the moment. It's uh, been a busy day, but nevertheless, I hope that I can come up with some interesting items which uh, can uh, be seen as the successor to the series of uh, As in the Days of Noah. And uh, there were giants in these days. And this is the continuation here. This is session 102. And uh, so let's have it another uh, go for this very famous verse of Genesis 6 4 bread. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that reads there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came into or unto the daughters of men and they bear children to them, the same became mighty men which are of old men of renown. Yeah, thanks so much. Up to now, we only have talked about these giants in the earth in those days, speaking about before the flood, because Genesis 6 is depicting the events surrounding the biblical flood, which also can be seen or verified on different continents around the world. So it's not only in Europe or in Asia or so, it's, it's all around the world. So it's worldwide, it's a big flood. And before the flood, of course, there were giants in the earth. So there were gigantic uh, people in the earth. And these were the offspring of the sexual intercourse between the daughters of men, so the, the regular women, and the sons of God. Sons of God uh, is, uh, are depicting fallen angels here. So these um, fallen angels had the ability to multiply together with daughters of men and so there were so-called hybrids and these hybrids were named the giants because of their size and of their power of their strength and uh, up to now we only has talked about the biblical events before the flood and now we will touch on the subject which happened to be after the flood because in that very verse here genesis 6 4 which it actually is speaks in those days and also after that so it is after that flood so also after that there were giants in the earth that is really interesting and fascinating subject because we can only understand the present and have a look into the future when we understand the past and the biblical content clearly speaks about gigantic uh, humanoids, so a mixture between uh, fallen angels and uh, daughters of men, which uh, means also, of course, um, that they inhabit not only um, this, uh, this offspring of the fallen ones, but also being the offspring of evil. Because the fallen angels means they did not obey God, and they were cast on to the earth, like Satan was cast to the earth in Revelation chapter 12. He was cast down and his angels were cast down with him. That means we have been surrounded by invisible creatures here called fallen angels, spirits, or if you like to say so, angels in a very different content. You see, usually people depict angels as, a, as some terrific divine beings. But the problem is there are good angels on the one hand and bad or evil angels or fallen angels or fallen ones on the other hand. And the Bible clearly speaks of the reason for the reason of the big flood worldwide. The destruction of entire mankind except Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives, speaking of eight people in a boat. And these eight people were the only one who have survived the flood. If you don't believe that and think that is a fairy tale, just look against Turkey. Because in the mountains of Ararat, they have also been found by um, none other than, uh, just please help me out, what was the name of that guy who have uh, discovered the Noah's Ark? Oh, yeah, there's a fella that... Uh... Ron Wyatt. Yeah, Ron yeah, Wyatt. Ron Wyatt. 
Yeah, so you got right. even you got uh, evidence which no one in the mass media would, would talk about about the biblical flood and the Noah's Ark. Oh yeah, and there's a story behind that. So you you read old books and you read about the deluge, and that means the time, of course, of the flood. Mm -hmm. And um, you have a pre-diluvian, and then uh, that's before the flood, and then the the diluvian world. Mm. So those words refer to the flood, and it's it's really interesting to read these old books that speak about that as well. And I think you know, Michael, that's very a very important thing for this study is to recognize that yes, we did have a biblical flood, and the Bible is telling the truth because what we go through in our schools. They tell us, no, there was no flood, that, that's all just a, a myth. Mm -hmm. See, they flipped it upside down because sure. the world that, that we grew up in, Michael, sure, back at the time when we were in school, it was, uh, it was stronger. They had a much uh, deeper understanding of polytheism versus monotheism that means mm. mysticism versus true biblical christianity whereas today it's gotten even more blurred so we have to work hard to restore the past and make it present in this time in the and in the future of course yeah. and i think we're up against a, a really really vicious torrent of, we're also uh, up against wickedness. the we, we're up against the um, superstitious belief of 99.9% .9 of the world's population. Yeah, yeah no and one's the gone. papacy doesn't help us out because they just <laughs> no. culminate all of that ask, through, ask yourself through a question. that system of Roman Catholicism. Ask Go yourself ahead. a question. If you would have the choice to choose between the evolution theory of Charles Darwin, which was not from Charles Darwin, but was originated from his grandfather and he's got it from the Freemasons and all this stuff. Yeah, imagine uh, if you would could choose quite logically yeah would you think that you're just a, a product of random rain uh, on millions and billions of years yeah um and you're worth nothing you're just a random thing or on the other hand you will be divinely created and you have the chance of eternal life so what's your choice yeah if you really believe that you are absolutely nothing worth that you're worth nothing and you just happened existing by random and it just took billions of years like a big bang and all happened randomly yeah then it's your choice but if god has opened and cleared your mind then you really see that you have a you have a, a moral you have conscience you have morals yeah you have oh, things that's that so important michael you know and and that's something you can't emphasize enough any one of us you know, that has the real faith knows that we came from a very corrupt uh, frame of mind. And, and, you know, this is this is the the problem that we all face, you know, when we when we actually face that that moment of becoming truly born again and accepting the spirit into our mind in in, in you know, acquiring the scriptures into our heads so we can actually know the scriptures this is what gives conscience like michael just said mm -hmm. yeah ask yourself a question who would build a huge wooden structure been held together with metal plates and all this stuff yeah in the in the midst of a mountain range <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah, of course. It's just that I believe in the story of creation and many people just believe in the school system and their so-called education, which means nothing else that you'll be educated as a slave of the state. Yeah, don't ask anything. Uh, just recall everything that you have heard and then you get good grades and you get a good job, a decent income and everything is fine. Yeah, the truth will not be rewarded in this world. Yes, yeah, so the truth will be hated and persecuted. Actually, yeah. So the people will hate you for speaking out the truth. Yeah, because everything in this world um, is is the other way around. So the lie, uh, 
yeah, will be rewarded yes, for speaking out the lie and you say, oh, I know something, I know how old the earth is and it's spinning and all the bullshit. Yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> yeah, 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 you will get, get good grades and afterwards you will get money and fame. And that's what all the people, most of the people just want. They want to have money and fame. But let's not look at that picture here. Let's go after this uh, giant thing in the earth. So that means that also after the flood, when ev all life was destroyed, yeah, even then, there came, once again, sons of God, and they had also intercourse with the daughters of men. Ta -ta 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 -ta. And I know that some of you out there will have a hard time believing that, but I can't help it. It's the Bible. Either you believe everything in the Bible, or you just are cherry-picking some things out of the Bible, but that means that if you are cherry-picking, you do not believe that the Bible is the holy word of God, Yeah, so then you got a really big problem. In my own opinion, then you're not a, not a real Christian. If you just share me and say, oh yeah, that, so, that I believe and the other parts I do not believe. Yeah, then you really, I think you got a, got a major problem. You have a major problem because, and it's not the Holy Spirit guiding you. But it's just my opinion here. I'm not uh, infallible. Yeah, so after that also, there were giants in the earth. And that's what I would like to speak today. Unless I have just re recognized that the infamous or famous German car manufacturer called Porsche in America, Porsche, yeah, they have a new Porsche called Mission R bread. <laughs> Mission R ah. prototype in mm -hmm. Spain. Yeah, looks not quite nice here. Huh? I bite you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, are those lightning, uh, like a lightning uh, decal over the whole thing or mm, what? I don't know. Yeah. Looks like it. Looks yeah. like, yeah, it's electrified, of course. Yeah, so huh? that's uh, most likely. So mission is a code word, for example, it's just here. In, please grant me that four second excerpt here. A mission means a sending abroad as an agent, so like James Bond, an agent originally of Jesuits. So the military of the Roman Catholic Church, that's other Jesuits, they have taken over the <clears throat> Inquisition, so to torture people and to kill the people from the Dominicans in the 16th century then. Yeah, and so that means um, every time you hear the word mission, it means it has some clerical background. It has something to do with the church. Yeah, missionary, of course. Yeah, and so that is here the Porsche mission R. Yeah, so they are hands in hands with the Jesuits. They're hands in hands with the church. And then you can smell and you can think of yourself um, if that company would be so successful um, if they not have taken some names of some Roman Catholic terms ah, like like Michael. mission and Luke Luke 10 18 sure and he said unto them I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven mention that the, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Seeing no, this Porsche on. called a mission with lightning all over it <laughs> yeah yeah sure it's a you mission know, from Satan it's immediately you see that? what I what I thought mm -hmm. is was this this Yeah, first. also also that's very interesting. You see that if Stephanie would be around, <laughs> yeah, you see that her cat is named Zeus, and Zeus is being prominent as the head god of the uh, Olympic gods. Yeah, and he's uh, when he's angry, he's sending lightning bolts to the earth, to the earth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Zeus, yeah, Zeus means Uh, actually, uh, and it's another depiction of Satan because Satan is also depicted with the lightning, and that does not mean that the cat has something, some problems. It is actually the name which bears some resemblance because Zeus never existed, of course. Yeah? But as I know her cat, and uh, it's a very friendly cat which is very demanding that you uh, 24/7 cuddle him uh, but apart from that i got no problem with the cat so back to the mission here mission means the sending of jesuits so um, porsche has uh, named all the stuff that they have ever come up to uh, or a majority of stuff yeah they have named about roman catholic stuff like their magazine porsche magazine is named christophorus so that's a roman saint for traveling yeah. <laughs> really yeah that's christophorus yeah Uh -huh. It's a Roman saint for traveling. Up to this very day, of course. Yeah, Christophorus special edition, Ferdinand Porsche, 18th birthday. Yeah, so that's a Christophorus special edition. Yeah? So how does that work, Michael? Uh, Volkswagen is actually part of 
Porsche or is Porsche no. part of Volkswagen? Oh, I don't ask work? me. I'm not familiar with that anymore. <laughs> yeah, just just. But they uh, are the same company, aren't they? Uh, Technically, I, I, I think that Porsche w once was in uh, had the intention to take over uh, Volkswagen, but that did not succeed. Okay. I don't know what, uh, who's who's the major stockholder now. Maybe it's it's Blackwater or somebody else. I do not know. Well, well, but because you have you have Volkswagen and you have Audi and then you have Porsche and they all exchange parts. Yes. I know that because yes. I've owned German cars. Yes. Um, you know, I used to. You know, my very first car, of course, was an Audi 5000 Turbo. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was it was many years ago it wasn't that great a car actually it had a lot of problems but it was fun nevertheless but mm. uh expensive yeah so that porsche 911 thing 911 means satan actually yeah so 911 means mm -hmm. the 11th of september in new york 911 means the 9th of november the fall of the berlin wall yeah these are all 911 codes 911 being the emergency code in the united states as well at 911 means also the porsche 911 so the most uh, successful model and 911 of course uh, is just a revelation 911 which means the oh angel by the way Michael, I just want to quick say something before I forget. Now, those of us that live in America might not know this, but in in Europe, they go by the date first, the, yes. the day of the month, and then the month, yes. instead of the way they do it in the United States, where mm -hmm. you do the month first, and then the day. So just to really confuse things, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's the way it works. So their 9-11 would be the day the Berlin Wall fell, correct? Yes, yes. yes yeah, yes, and yes. that was in 1989? Yes. Incredible. Yes. Incredible. Yeah, and, and you see that 9-11, uh, your World Trade Center being destroyed as an inside job and the Berlin Wall being tram trampled down, uh, not by accident, but on purpose. In German uh, date format, it's also 11-9, uh, so it's 9-11, it's the other way around. So, which means that uh, in the King James Version, it is depicted here and he had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit. So another angel whose name mm -hmm. is in Hebrew tongue Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue is named Apollyon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that means that is a depiction, another name like Zeus, yeah, for Satan. Yeah, 9/11 means the angel of the bottomless pit. The bottomless pit is the lake of fire. Is uh, that pit that uh, that it's actually worse than hell? It's just the the end station yeah. for Satan and his uh, dominions. Yeah. So that I think that explains also why 9/11. Yeah, is it's it's those who serve the other side michael and that's why we want to call out those that are not decided yet um mm -hmm. you know that's why michael and i make these videos is to reach out to you our dear friends that have not decided what side they should consider to be the truth because there's two different truths here mm -hmm. there's the truth of darkness and there's the truth of light and righteousness mm -hmm. so you have the truth you have the 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 darkness and the lies and the liar which is satan and then you have the light and you have the truth and you have righteousness which is the word of god or father god i guess we would mm -hmm. call him yes oh, almighty god yes almighty god yeah, yeah and that's not something that we can really describe in detail that's something that we all need to study so thanks michael sorry go ahead no it's 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 not you see that it's so obvious why that company is so successful they take 9 11 as a code for satan uh, on their most uh, famous car and then they have uh, decided to go now uh, fully into the electric car because that is the, the policy of the moment actually electric cars up to my knowledge they have been invented more than 100 years ago but uh, some companies decided that it would be more profitable they would uh, earn more money uh, go go into have uh, uh, gasoline fueled cars and so that is a quite old concept it's nothing new about it so but uh, they go full force into that uh, satanic concept of uh, getting rid of all the usual gasoline cars um, so that only uh, exclusive range of people are allowed to have individual transport by their own vehicle because of course it is to ex be ex expected that in the future um, 
all this power will be restricted by the authorities because it uh, usually if you just drive around the usual car then uh, you will pollute uh, officially your environment with co2 which is of course another hawks and another indoctrination but you see that so much uh, symbolism here in that porsche 911 you see that it's called 911 that car or, or i don't know do not know if that it, it also called 911 but i would highly doubt it it's just their favorite most favorite model then it's called the mission and it has lightning bolts all around it you see that <laughs> You got uh, then several depictions of Satan on that, you know? and it also looks doesn't look quite nice. No? Gonna bite you, gonna eat you for breakfast. Yeah. So mission means the sending as an agent originally of Jesuits, so to spy or just to uh, be undercover and just to discover things uh, as a private detective or so as an agent. Also meaning an organized effort for the spread of religion for enlightenment of community. So mission is just a, is a thing to spread a religion. And if you believe in the religion of fast automobiles or if you believe in the religion of uh, technique and uh, science. Um, the devil does not care what your belief is uh, as long as you do not believe in Jesus Christ because that is his enemy. Yeah, it, it, It's just his enemy that if you <coughs> believe in sports and um, uh, um, uh, Novak Djokovic uh, is your god, is a world famous tennis player, or if you believe in Formula One and uh, who knows is your god, yeah, he does not care as long as you do not read the Bible and you are just uh, not uh, drawn towards Jesus Christ. So that's just this small excerpt here. Huh? And it's also... Um, uh, Yeah, just a, a, a remark here that mission control means a team of the ground responsible for directing a spacecraft and its crew from 1964, one year after Kennedy was fatally shot. <laughs> But originally that word means an sending of Jesuits. So we can assume that on mission control um, there is uh, quite uh, an appropriate amount of Jesuitism or an agent. Uh, it's, it's behind. Yeah? So that mission control means you control the sending of Jesuits. Yeah? Welcome to the NASA Mission Control Center. Mission, once again, means the sending out of Jesuitical agents for the Roman Catholic Church. And Artemis is not by accident a pagan goddess of, I think it was the Greece, Greek, ah, Greece, Greek, Artemis. Once they call them Apollo mission, yeah, then they call Artemis in the Greek mythology, the goddess of hunt and birth and the moon and uh, so much other things you don't want to know. So it's also Greek, like Zeus, <laughs> yeah, Artemis one, mission control. Yeah, this is the new mission control <laughs> of the Jesuits, and this is the old mission control, which was responsible for the Apollo moon landing, if you believe in that uh, BS theory, because it's just a theory. Everybody sees a rocket uh, pulling upwards, and that's all you see. The other things you see uh, is just a distraction being uh, from a television uh, screen and uh, without any delay from the moon and uh, so much things. They did not see any stars on the moon and uh, it's such just hilarious funny if somebody really with a with a background that he has just uh, looked upon a book of physics uh, actually knows that it's impossible to go to the moon. Well, you know, Michael, quite simply, when you point out the photo mm -hmm. of the lander mm -hmm. on yeah. the supposed moon and yeah. you pick that thing apart yeah. uh, there's no possible way that that could be the truth because if you look at it, it it's just blatantly obvious it's not even a spacecraft it's mm -hmm. just a mock-up mm -hmm. so yeah don't <laughs> Don't let me convince you. Do your mm. own research, right, yeah. Michael? Yeah, it, it takes a lot of amount of aluminium foil. Yeah, protect you from heat and more than 200 degrees yeah, yeah, Celsius. Yeah. Yeah. Go up high. Look at that. <laughs> look at that sheet metal. Does that look like a precision-made spacecraft? <laughs> which is responsible Seriously. for which is responsible for life or death? Yeah. It's a, li it's a life or death uh, decision here. If something goes wrong <laughs> and you see, yeah. that, you see that big, that big uh, thrust uh, engine here and you don't see any dust uh, around it. So how did they get there? How did they get there? It's so obvious. It's so obvious. It's not, re it's not even funny because the majority of people will believe any shit you present them on the television. My, my, my. Yeah, we have thrust. 
Oh, <laughs> uh, that's yeah, a strange it's moon. Bad. It's that, pretty bad. That's a strange moon that they were getting to. That's a strange mm -hmm. moon. You see that? Uh, oh, maybe, maybe. Oh, maybe you have to call the NASA and tell them. Oh, there is some glue missing here. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, right. But, Let's go back because it just is totally out of context here. So from this legendary room of the NASA Johnson, which is uh, depicted here for the um, successor of Kennedy, um, Lyndon B. Johnson, which has been known for being some of the most criminal uh, United States presidents of all time, from this legendary room. So it's a legend. You have to believe it. America conducted some of its most amazing space missions. So to fool you around, this video montage captures the significance of the historic Mission Control Center as the NASA Johnson Space Center, which has undergone a massive restoration to bring the room back to life. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. With the computers from 1969, yeah, they managed to send three people upwards. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. But you have to, of course, you have to preserve all the stuff for the up future generation so that they believe the same lie, because uh, Mission Control will serve as a reminder that anything is possible. Yeah, anything is possible it means that <laughs> <laughs> meaning totally deceiving you, dear listener, is possible. Yes, it, it, it is. Anything is possible means that they can play God. It's, it's, it, they that are too. Yes, they right. are omnipotent. Yeah. So NASA means. So they think. So they think. So they yeah. think. Yeah. NASA means National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Aeronautic means an aerial navigation by means of a balloon. Mm hmm. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, X means uh, science and disciples, and X means having to do something with the nature of being made of course by similarity to like the Titanic means having to do with Titans, having the nature of Titans, being Titans, made of Titans, caused by Titans, similar to Titans. And we know that the Titans were the forerunner of the giants when it comes down to the Greek <gasps> mythology. Mm -hmm. So an administration, you see, NASA, it's an abbreviation. Everybody can fill in their own thing. Uh, usually it, it's been uh, uh, depicted as never a straight answer. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> or not a space agency uh, also. <laughs> 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 yeah, But it's a space administration. Administration means from minister oh. coming inferior servant, a priest assistant. Michael, what session was that we did on the Satanic Music Agenda where we talked about uh, JPL? Or was that... Yeah, we did four sessions on the NASA Moonhawks. Yes, yeah, yeah about 80, 77 to 80 or so. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Administer means a man consecrated to service in a Christian church or ecclesiastic, also an agent for acting for a superior, one who acts upon the authority of another. So, it, mission means a sending out of agents for the Catholic Church and minister, so from administration of the NASA, means an agent acting for a superior. You only acting. have to know the very, real very origin and meaning. Word. Huh? Uh, you know, okay. You know the word hypocrisy, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to be a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. It comes from Greek, right? And mm -hmm. it's the putting on of masks. Mm -hmm. So when, you, when you're acting, playing the actor, you are a hypocrite. Because that is the very definition of it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, it's not, uh, it's not the part of, of this etymology. Well, that's what I get from it because, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, did, did you look up hypocrite? Is that what it is in etymology online? Oh. Is that the correct Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, Mount Helicon, sacred to the muses. Okay. So, um, okay, the Greek hypocrine earlier uh let's see known as horse fountain okay um well that's what i get from it is essentially you know it's the wearing of masks at a theater right mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. when you mm -hmm. become an actor when you are acting you are you are playing the part you're not yourself okay this mm -hmm. is very important you're not yourself mm -hmm. you're someone else you're trying mm -hmm. to be someone else mm -hmm. The so, 
the British Go Britannia ahead. Dictionary says a person who claims or pretend to have certain beliefs about what is right and who, who behaves in a way that disagrees with those beliefs. Yeah, yes. so it's just a, it's just the two side uh, Janus. Yeah, you see that uh, you can be everything for anybody, but uh, it's not clear that what you are. You see that you're yeah, you're two faced. Yeah, that's you're two -faced, a really yeah. good mm -hmm. way to put it. Yes, yeah. two faced. In other words, you become a liar, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So that is that is quite interesting with the NASA. Minister means from ministrant, so to minister. It's it's just a verb here, not the noun. To minister means to perform religious rites, provide religious services. You see that uh, NASA. <laughs> it's very interesting, yeah. Um, as I know that also sometimes, even sometimes, we got some young listeners. Um, the symbolism of the NASA is just depicting a snake's tongue, a forked tongue. Yeah, so that is the the symbol of uh, Satan when it comes down to be a serpent. Yeah, a serpent is an animal which is crawling on its belly to eat dust, according to the Bible in Genesis chapter three, and that is the fork of the tongue. Yeah, NASA would explain you. Oh, yeah, this is just a wing. Hmm? Sure, strange wing, huh? And then it's it red. It almost looks like an Ouroboros there. Yeah, that's well. yeah, that should be the. Um, the orbit the snake here. eating yeah. its own tail, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's get back to Genesis 6 4 then. There were giants in the earth in those days, meaning before the flood, and also after, which means. Let uh, oh, me go into a context Genesis 6 4. It's quite interesting because years ago I did a Bible study in uh, German actually with the. Victor and Jörg, and I did not uh, uh, did not um, speak out my intentions because I think that that would have uh, totally outstressed the entire session then. Um, but it, you see, that is just this uh, Genesis six, where there were giants in the earth in those days. Yeah, and afterwards the Lord says, "I will destroy man from the face of the earth." But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You see that this. Uh, um, coupling of having offspring between men and between fallen angels was the actual root, the cause of the great flood. It was not just a single man or what else. No, it was just the, um, yeah, this uh, intervention which came from these fallen angels, actually, which uh, led to the big flood that you really have to realize. And that happened before the flood, in those days before the flood and also after that. Yeah, so it happened after that. I came across a quite interesting video of somebody in the Jewish belief. This video is called There were giants after the flood, there will be giants in the last days. Yeah, so this what happened will have an effect also here because if you do not know real history, you are totally lost because if you believe that television apparatus, yeah, you believe an invention of the Roman Catholic Church or the Jesuits because that television is nothing more than the successor of the so-called magic lantern, magische Laterne in Deutsch, which was invented by the Jesuit called Athanasius Kircher to distract the people, so that they really think that everything which comes out of that television box, which is called, very interesting, the television apparatus in America is called the idioten box, the idiot box, yeah, because uh, people really uh, misjudge that television for being real. So, the things that happened on Earth, which led to the almost entire destruction of mankind in the big flood yeah, was the intercourse, the sexual intercourse between fallen ones and uh, between uh, this, uh, yeah, the daughters of men, so the average uh, human woman here. So, and then this is a question here that arises. If the flood destroyed the giants, because the flood destroyed all life, meaning man, meaning animal, also meaning giants, Everything that is breathing has been drowned in the big flood. Who was uh, happening for, if I remember correctly, Brad, 40 days? Yeah, that's another resemblance also to Jesus Christ's uh, temptation in the desert, which uh, was uh, occurring after 40 days and 40 nights. But 14 days. So it, it rained on the earth for 14, 40, not 14, 40 days. And all the life has been destroyed, yeah. Because if everything is drowning, then you don't have air in that uh, 
in the sea which you can breathe so if you got nostrils so that means all the life was destroyed except eight people on that boat on the Noah's Ark so then of course he's asking the valid question if the flood destroyed the giants and all the life except these eight people then how did the giants continue after that there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that so how did they continue after that yeah and he's coming to the only um, logical conclusion Brett it happened the exact same way so also after the flood there must be some fallen angels because a fallen angel um, explicitly means a spiritual being which cannot be killed by water, fire or something else but by the creator of a spiritual being of a ghost himself. You see, if a spirit has no mortal body then you can't drown him. You can't shoot at him. Yeah. So, what happened after the flood? The exact same way happened. Genesis 6, 4. When the sons of God came in to the daughters of men, and this it can take quite literally, when they had sex with the daughters of men. That assumes um, a thing which is uh, unimaginable, unimaginable by the majority of people, that an angel can manifest himself in the flesh. But I think we have to agree on that, Brett. Well, that Michael, would it be as simple as... A, you've heard of demon possession, right? Mm -hmm. When a man or a woman gives their consent to an entity they know not much about, they turn over their body to the entity mm -hmm. and the entity takes over mm -hmm. i know that was also these are two possibilities either these um yeah it's a spiritual thing michael that's what i get out of this mm -hmm. it's a spiritual it's not it's not thing. that easy you have got two possibilities either they did it uh, somewhere on the artificial way yeah, but then you would have to believe that they had the uh, possibility to uh, to do kind of wonders. Yeah, you see, Jesus Christ. We know Jesus Christ's title is not only the Messiah or the Savior or the Anointed One. Jesus Christ's title is the only begotten Son of God. But these Son of Gods or Sons of God, multiple Sons of God, were the cause of the destruction of the entire population of the earth. So there can't be righteous sons of God. There must be unrighteous or evil sons of God. So fallen ones, fallen angels. All the angels were created by God in the first place. But it seems that God has uh, provided them a kind of free will so that they could choose between him and Satan. And we know that from Revelation 12, a third of the angels decided to strive with Satan and to fight against an almighty God, which is so unlogical. Yeah? How can you fight and, and, and think to succeed against an almighty being? That struck me every time. But you see that Satan is so powerful that he has got so much imagination to put in the mind of even angels, which are far more sophisticated and far more intelligent than we humans are, and that he can even convince them. So how easy it must be for Satan to convince the usual mortal man here. So this is the first possibility that they were doing some miraculous thing that uh, really they, these uh, daughters were bearing children to them which uh, were doing artificial. But I have a hard time believing in that because uh, I think there's uh, some other possibilities, but I hope that I can uh, talk about that later. The other possibility is that they could, can have uh, shaped and in, into a human body and then have uh, quite a usual intercourse because you, you, you have to think about the offspring of these uh, uh, intermingling were giants and they had a human body interesting 
but it's just you draw your own conclusions. I have I have a conclusion which I hope to um, uh, can present later on at the end of the session. Uh, then please remind me, Brad, that I have to do an excerpt on the Bible. So, so it can only happen. It must have happened by logically the same way around. That once again, one of these uh, survivors on that boat, yeah, and their offspring, they also began to. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, to uh, not obey God, but uh, just to to fall for the fallen ones and to have uh, intercourse which was not uh, ordained and which was not uh, allowed. In uh, because we as humans are the creation of God. We have been created in the image of God. So. That is logical conclusion that it happened the same way around. The, you can ask yourself, and I can't answer the question why God has allowed it a second time. Yeah, but you see that as He has allowed it, uh, quite literally, um, quite logically, <coughs> yeah, you see that uh, that the daughters of men always fell for this intelligence, charm, uh, good looking, or what else I do not know attributes of that fallen ones. Yeah, because they were smarter and better built and. Uh, more charming, what else, than the ordinary humans. Huh? Cool, okay. So, every time, everywhere, you see that there is a falling away from God. And that actually lets, lead, leads or led to the big flood. Okay. And to the daughters of men, if it happened after the flood, how did it happen then? When the sons of God came in, they came in, knock, 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 to the daughters of a man. And then they had an offspring. And he's speaking here about an incursion. Incursion is also very interesting because incursion means an intruding as a military aspect. Yeah? So with force. Yeah? So maybe um, these women were raped. We, we can't know that. We can't know that. The Bible just only speaks about um, they had uh, intercourse and offspring with the daughters of men. Do I know if they were taken that uh, voluntarily bred or if they have been forced to do so? I do not know. I do not know. And I have not studied that subject so deep because I have another point which I would like to make. Yeah? He says, because incursion also can mean uh, that you have an incursion into a female body then. This means, that is the result, he says, his conclusion is, um, that is a war between two seeds, the righteous seed of God and the unrighteous seed of Cain, or of the, the followers of Satan, so to speak, which he says started in Genesis 3 and still rages today. In Genesis 3, I have depicted here, when uh, the woman gave the forbidden fruit to Adam and both eat, yeah, he was asked afterwards from the Lord God, uh, what have you done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me and I did eat. And uh, that is the very interesting verse 15. Brett, I did not want to take over your part, please. Right. And that reads, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Yeah, and once again, you got the one verse uh, before you got that serpent mentioned. That is the serpent with the serpent with the forked tongue of the Nazar also. So serpent is a depiction of the devil. Yeah, so the devil has his seed, which he has not created on its own, because also the devil has been a cre or is a created uh, being, a divine being, a created being, divinely created being. Yeah, but he has not a seed of his own, but he is, uh, as Brett so has pointed out, he's, uh, he and his followers, his fallen angels, they are possessing um, souls of men, yeah, so that they act as uh, in, in the spirit of Satan. Yeah, so people lying, destroying, murdering, killing, harassing people, all the stuff, yeah, bullying people. Yeah. Yeah, so there are two seeds only. There are no uh, satanic bloodlines and all the stuff. Yeah, this is just forgery. It's, uh, 13 satanic bloodlines is all Illuminati uh, uh, bullshit. Yeah, these are only two seeds. Yeah, the righteous seed or Abel or Seth, and on the other side, the unrighteous seed, which is Cain. Cain slew his brother Abel on the field. That is the first murder depicted in uh, the book of Genesis. Yeah, and so um, I think. Um, it, it is okay to see it that way, that there are two seeds, and two offsprings also. 
but I would say that it happened quite before in Revelation 12, in heaven. That's right, Michael. Yeah, so because um, to have the consent of a woman or to, uh, to have intercourse with fallen ones, if it is on a voluntarily basis, which means uh, that uh, these uh, were fallen for the, these women were fallen for the fallen ones, well, well yeah. And um, you see that in verse 9, Revelation 12, verse 9, it is clearly depicted that the serpent and, uh, and, and dragon is uh, just a, a name for Satan. Would you like to read that? Yes. And that is, uh, let's see, what book and chapter again now are Revelation, Revelation 12. 12, verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So that means that we are being surrounded here by uh, evil entities, spirits, who can influence people into uh, murdering, stealing, uh, robbing, uh, what else, what you can imagine. Well, yeah, and there also mentions in the book of Revelation, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. Mm. For the devil has come down having great wrath, mm. because he knoweth he hath he have only a short time. Yeah, he's he has come down, but not on his free will. <laughs> he well, was see, cast that's down. just it. He that's was cast just down. it, Michael. He yeah. he may have been divinely created, but mm. he fell and he was cast out, so he's mm. no longer divine. Yes. He's lost divinity. That's the, the problem. He, he, is, he is actually the chief influencer of all wickedness on this earth. He has been depicted in the Bible as the so-called God of this world. But you, uh, I know that there was a remark, a, a comment on, on one of the last videos who said that, okay, God of this world uh, can't be Satan, must be the almighty God. But sorry, uh, I have just another opinion about it because the God of this world, you see that God is almighty. He is not limited to this world. So it is just... Well, you pointed out, Michael, so long ago and many, many occasions that in that instance in the Bible when Jesus was tempted of Satan, I believe during those 40 days of his fasting, uh, that, uh, you know, Satan is given the power of the kingdoms of the earth. It's his. It's not Jesus Christ. It's not God. It's the it's the false Christ, the Antichrist, that runs the world. It says right there, what was that again? Um, biblical reference, Michael, uh, was that Mark? Uh, Luke 4.4. 4. Luke 4.4, 4, thank mm. you. It was Luke, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's Yeah, right. we have quoted that so m many times. But that's the perfect example mm. of why uh, Michael is saying this this uh, this this thread of uh, logic I mean it just only makes perfect sense to me too Michael that it would that it would work out that way yeah the, the thing is that the people really here admiring Satan for all his works yeah, so that people really strive for war, for example. Yeah, all of the politicians are s shouting out for war. Yeah, the devil said unto him, Brad. Yes, and the devil said unto him, All this power I will give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, yes, the devil, and to whomsoever I will give it. But yeah, I mean, he showed him, okay, in verse 5, and the devil taking him up unto a high mountain showed him the, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. Verse 6, and the devil said unto him, all this power I will give thee. Mm -hmm. Couldn't be more clear than that. Yeah, so it's, it's about worship. Yeah, and people are yes. worshiping Satan and all the material things instead so of... So the uh, God of this world is Satan. Mm-hmm. It's not Christ. Don't you understand? It's that everyone has turned it all around. And of course, we have the Counter-Reformation today. It doesn't make it any easier for us. Hmm. It makes it that much harder. 
Hmm. But remember, dear listener, that it is the narrow path and few that find it. Do you want to be one of the few that find the path to righteousness? Yeah, I think we there will are be, only few that will. I think we will be stripped of all our worthy possessions in the end. So that is my suggestion. But uh, yes, right. Yeah. So that we really can, we, we will have to make a decision or we will have to take a stand. You see, there will be no, not much people taking a stand for the almighty God. The, the majority of people will take a stand for having the latest Porsche, having a big house, having beautiful women and men and, and, and vacations and uh, ships and, and what else? Uh, the, the new s latest smartphone and all the stuff. Yeah, that's it's just the material world we are living in. But it's all about worship. It's all about worship. He asked for, devil asked for worship. Yeah, and uh, the first commandment says, thou, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it That's is all right. about worship. The devil wanted to be worshipped in heaven and then he was cast out because you can't win a fight against an almighty being who has created you in the first place. Come on. How, how blinded Satan must be. But I think that he said, okay, I don't care as long as I got my followers because I want to be worshipped. Isn't that interesting? In verse 9 he says, and he brought him to Jerusalem to Jerusalem mm -hmm. and set him on a pinnacle, a pinnacle, mm -hmm. Michael, mm -hmm. a pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from hence. Mm -hmm. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. Mm -hmm. And in their hands, they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou shall dash, dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering him said unto him it is said thou shalt not tempt the lord thy god mm -hmm. and when the devil ended ended his temptation he departed from him for a season yeah and and the succession succession of that is of course at the last supper when the satan uh, was uh, possessing then judas iscariot there you go. That is that is the absolutely contrary to all that psychology blah blah out there. Yeah. If you if you really have the Last Supper as a prime example, the Last Supper, uh, or oh, I have a hard time remembering oh, it. Matthew you know what, Michael? You know when you when you delve into psychology, as a side note, it is absolutely stunning how much occultism is mixed in there. Yeah. I just you, cannot believe how blinded those poor souls are that study psychology they just cannot see it mm -hmm. yeah you got here luke chapter 22 what is then what is verse 3 mm -hmm. luke chapter 22 should i read the three verses yes now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh which is called the passover and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him, for they feared the people. Then entered Satan into Judas, surnamed Iscariot, being the number of the twelve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, entered Satan into Judas. There you go. That's demon possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's satanic possession. It is actually explicitly uh, speaking about Satan, not about the fallen one. And did, and and who were the people who were then trying to crucify Jesus Christ? So the son of the real son of God. We were, where were the people? They were the chief priests and scribes. So they were the elite. And who's the elite nowadays? What is the elite? The World Health Organization. Mm -hmm. The World Economy Forum. The United Nations, mm -hmm. the German uh, government, the Vatican, mm -hmm. these are the elites. It's the same thing around 2,000 years ago. If Jesus yeah, Christ would appear in the District human... of Columbia here in the United States. Yeah. If Jesus Christ would reappear here, just theoretically, just in a mortal human body, they would crucify him again. And Satan entered into Judas. So that means the Bible clearly speaks of demonic possession. Are you really surprised to learn that in the international health codes, ICD codes, where all these uh, 
illnesses, weaknesses and all the stuff of the people have been uh, uh, so, uh, summarized. Yeah, you won't find demonic possession. It's an antichrist system. You see that if, if you talk about, oh, yeah, I know somebody who's uh, listening to voices and hearing voices and all the stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's psychology will not deal with uh, possessions. Psychology will deal with, deal with, yeah, she has multiple personality disorder and all the stuff. Yeah, they have to fight the Bible at every cost, but they can't tell you the truth. Satan entered into Judas. Today. So, we will find, we will have to find out, no, it is not important to find out how the fallen ones did it, if they had to materialize or if they had uh, some other means um, to have an offspring. Um, it's important to realize that they had offspring. So, let's get back. We know there are two seeds, the righteous seed and the unrighteous seed. The unrighteous seed of Cain is the first murderer and it's very telling when the Pope John the 23rd says the mark of Cain is stamped upon our foreheads for we knew not what we did. Yeah. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So that means that he is in the line of murderer. Murderers. Huh? Congratulations. You see that first at least a Pope who admits it, Brad. Mm-hmm. There are two lines, two seeds. Yeah? Remember Genesis 3.15, I will put enmity between your seed and thy seed. There are two seeds. And this is the unrighteous seed of Cain, the first murderer on earth. And guess what? I think he was possessed too. Of course. So that guy who was uh, doing that interesting video, he has got a Torah teaching ministries and sometimes it's not, uh, it's not bad to have somebody who is uh, really um, educated in the field of the Old Testament bread, I think, yeah, because uh, they are using uh, the Pentateuch or the Penta, means of course five, yeah, the five books of Moses, yeah. So, of course, Genesis the Giants is in the first book of Moses, uh, which is called in English the Genesis. And so, therefore, it is very interesting when he comes up with that, his conclusions. So, I'm, I'm, of, of course, I'm not agreeing with him because when he is in that Jewish belief, he does not take Jesus Christ as the Savior. I guess uh, that's so. But it's interesting that he says, okay, they try to annihilate the seed of that woman or the righteous seed, yeah, to contaminate the righteous seed. And it's very interesting because I was reminded there at this statue that they were uh, erecting in uh, some uh, districts, I think it was also, also in the United States of America, of that Baphomet it was, figure. It wasn't it in Oklahoma? I can't recall, Brad. I, I can't really so. recall. But it's very or interesting. Or Arkansas or something. I'll, I'll find out. It's very interesting because you see that he's had, had this, uh, that Pope gesture here. Huh? The 666, uh, another 666 symbol here also. And uh, yeah, whom he's educating. Yeah? Little children. He's the teacher of the enlightenment. Yeah, so you, you see the, this, this uh, flame and he's getting an enlightening and he's got here um, satanic pentagram and he's, he's got here a luciferian pentagram. So that luciferian mindset in these uh, school core curriculums and worldwide core curriculums, yeah, that uh, they don't talk about God, they don't talk about possession, they don't talk about anything except it's, their science. Yes, Michael, it's the Arkansas Capitol building. Oh, okay. Oh, you know, that's very interesting about Arkansas. Our friend from... Uh, Netherlands uh, posted up uh, mm -hmm. some videos on the the Clintons and uh, also uh, obstruction of justice by Jeremiah films you can look it up on YouTube mm -hmm. and um, very very telling um, this has been around for a very long time this this corruption uh, mm -hmm. it's it's coming out full face um, and uh, uglier than ever these days isn't it Michael mm -hmm. Yeah, more obvious than ever also, huh? Yes, right. Mm -hmm. More obvious. Yeah, you see that they will teach their doctrine into the minds of little of children, yeah, in the school system, education system. Yeah, you won't find the truth there. Yeah? They talk about uh, the Big Bang and they talk about evolution theory. They yeah, talk and apparently in Arkansas uh, Capitol building, it's okay. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. all right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll let that happen. Uh-huh. 
Yeah. And wasn't it uh, Bill Clinton came out of Arkansas? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bill and Hillary Clinton came mm -hmm. from Arkansas. He was mm -hmm. governor of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. So quite fitting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we succeed? Mm -hmm. Please. Okay. So the search phrase onto giants in the King James Version 1611 has uh, made uh, 11 uh, results then uh, in uh, total. Now, of course, this famous verse, Genesis 6, where there were giants in the earth, uh, in, in Deutsch it, uh, heißt, uh, it means uh, there were Riesen auf der Erde. Yeah? So giants, in German you say really Riesen, which means uh, gigantic size. It's a size, it's a height. Yeah, it's not only powerful or what else, it's height in German uh, translated then. Mm. So the etymology on giant means a fabulous man-like creature of enormous size. So once again, you got the size. And of course, if you have a, a certain height, you have to have a certain depth or uh, weight also. Yeah? Of a, one of a race of divine but savage and monstrous being, mm -hmm. personifying destructive natural forces, so monstrous beings, uh, in the etymology of the Greek, uh, sons of Gaia, so the earth and Uranus means the sky, Uranus means really the sky. Yeah, so the, you got also the mingling of uh, some heavenly beings with uh, things from the earth, eventually destroyed by the gods. Yeah, so this is uh, B as theory of the Greek mythology. And the real thing, the real deal in the Bible sp speaks of the daughters of men, that would be the sons of Gaia. Yeah. Um, or the daughters of men would be Gaia, so and the sons of God would be then Uranus, the sons from the sky. It, destroyed by the gods, it's, it's not quite right. It's destroyed by the Almighty God, by the flood. Yeah. So this is just a lie, and I've just explained you, uh, in my humble opinion, the truth. Okay. Gigantes, from Greek giant. Yeah. And now we got the second mentioning of the giants in the Bible. That is Numbers. 1333. Okay, Michael. So, Numbers 1333. And there were, <laughs> excuse me, and there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Mm hmm. If we take a look at that uh, very chapter here. Then the Israelites were sent to the land of Canaan. Canaan means the cannibals, the Canaanite um, admirers of Baal, so the cannibals, so the people who have uh, eaten their own people, yeah? so the Canaanites. And Moses did, and also the stuff, and then we have to skip to 33. Mm. And then they went and came to Moses and to Aaron in the wilderness, and they showed him the fruit of the land, and we came to the land, and uh, milk and honey, yeah? so in the land of milk and honey, they are, and uh, the people are strong that dwell in the land, so these are special people in that land, the cities are walled and very great, and we saw the children of Enoch there, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the sword, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, etc. Yeah. And then um, they had some people sent over there to take a look, and they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched, so the land of milk and honey, unto the children of Israel, so God's seed, mm -hmm. saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Yeah, you see, what did I tell you? Cannibals. And all the people that we saw in it are men of a great statue. So these giants are not about their power and uh, intelligent abilities, but of the size, the pure sheer size. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come to the giants, which come of the giants. Yeah, you see? And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. And now it's the first time that we got a comparison here in the Bible when it comes down to the giants. I asked myself, okay, how tall is a grasshopper? Because that is what the Israelites themselves has depicted in comparison to the size of the giants of the 
Sons of Enoch. I think so, the answer is very small, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> so the most grasshoppers individuals grow to about two inches long and sometimes five inches in length. Yeah, so I take it for granted that uh, maybe five inches that's the maximum of a grasshopper. And I, I looked up here a comic picture because I like that much more than the original picture. The original picture of a grasshopper looks a little bit of... Uh, Oh, I would think more like five centimeters at the biggest, but I'm in a pretty cold five climate. Five inches in centimeter would about be 13 centimeters. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's five, five point, uh, yeah, five, that's uh, five inches uh, multiplied with 2.54 centimeters. That's just about 13. Mm -hmm. So I have compared that five inches to a six feet average man. And six feet contains each feet contains 12 uh, inches correct Brett? yes yeah so that would be 72 inches yeah so 72 divided to 5 means um, that if you compare yourself as a being a grasshopper in the side of an of a average guy would mean that he would be 14 times higher which comes to a certain size of 86 feet that is just a comparison here 86 feet means 260 meters <laughs> 86 feet 260 meter that must be a little bit off yeah oh, that's way off yeah, way yeah. off yeah but right. compare that size sheet please to the bible yeah you got six foot for example for an average man which in german would be uh, one meter and 80 centimeters about and that goliath from the um after the flood with david and goliath Goliath, it would be the scale from 12 to 18 feet. Interesting, huh? So uh, we, we have it more, much more closer to that. So, and the early Canaanites giant scale, uh, referring to Amos book, uh, chapter 2, verse 9, is 24 to 36 feet. This is six times the height of a man, which would be in, 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 in meters, which be six times 180 would be uh, about 11 meters in height. In Amos 2.9, you got a certain depiction here, Brett. Mm -hmm. Amos 2.9. It's a Lord speaking here. Should I just read 9 then? Yes, and please. 9 through 11. Yet I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars, and he was strong as the oaks. Yet I destroyed his fruit from above and his roots from beneath. Also I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. And I raised up of your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarites, it is, excuse me, is it not even thus, O children, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? So that is the Lord speaking, that is God speaking. God says uh, the height of the Amorites, what about the height of the cedar? So we got another comparison, which is, I think, uh, which is of divine origin and which is much more closer, maybe. Yeah. The cedars, yeah, these are uh, special trees. That's a cedar in Lebanon. Let's skip to this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Cedars can grow up to a whopping 35 meters in height. To take that into consideration into feet, you would be close to 100 feet. Once again, God himself says, I destroyed the Amorite before them, whose height was like the height of the cedars. Uh, that's a quote, huh? Mm -hmm. The height of the cedars. That is God speaking in Amos 2.9 to his prophet. He says, the height of the cedars, like the height of the cedars. So maybe it was not 100 feet, but 80 feet. But uh, come on. Yeah, let's go back to the comparison sheet here. Yeah. 
Can you imagine? Yeah, maybe a, a certain uh, cedar is, is not 100 feet, but uh, 36 or 40 feet. I do not know. Yeah, it's it's compared to average man, it's uh, it's it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. The cedar is a majestic evergreen conifer which can grow up to 35 meters. So what I told you, 100 uh, feet around. So. There is also a site of worship called the Cedars of God in Lebanon. The forest of the Cedars of God. And God is speaking about it's like the height of the Cedars. The Cedars of God in Lebanon, exclusive forest of the Lebanon Cedar, thrives around Mount Lebanon in antiquity. These Cedars, the earliest documented reference of the Cedars of God, are found in tablets 4 to 6 of the great epic of Gilgamesh, six days' walk from Uruk. I said, oh no, not that uh, fairy tale book of Gilgamesh. That's, of course, a legend. Yeah, that is, uh, it's like the Olympic gods who never have existed. Uh, this is Gilgamesh, the master of animals, grasping a lion in his left arm and a snake in his right hand. So he uh, has something to do with the serpent then. Uh -huh, okay. Ah, oh, yeah, this was before the flood, officially, the ring. In Babylonian times, these stories were woven into a connective narrative. Most scholars agree that the Epic of Gilgamesh exerted substantial influence on the Iliad and the Odyssey, two epic poems written in ancient Greek during the 8th century before Christ. That's what I always tell, that uh, this is just uh, one author after the other, and nothing, not, not of, no one of these events have been... Uh, really substantiated, but uh, this is actually all the fairy tales of legends and uh, mysticism. Mm -hmm. In the Bible, Solomon procured cedar timber to build the temple in Jerusalem. So we can uh, assume that uh, the cedar was a precious, precious majestic uh, tree, which was used for uh, sanctuary, for uh, priests and for all this uh, ecclesiastic things yeah because in first kings 620 uh, it's really been uh, confirmed here that the altar was of cedar and when god himself says that the the sons of anak uh, they were high as a cedar's high you can imagine brad that these people were not just around 10 uh, feet tall huh So once again, giants. I'm sorry that I have a, such a slow pace today. Yeah, giants, fabulous man-like creatures of enormous size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that reminded me of the Lord of the Rings, actually. You know, you have so many fantasy, horror, science fiction concepts where there is a race of specific, powerful, large uh, animals like dinosaurs or specif specifically uh, large uh, size and height of uh, men like these, uh, yeah, let's let's face it, giants uh, in the Lord of the Rings, Herr der Ringe in Deutsch, yeah, so Lord of the Rings. And I can tell you that the origin of that story is coming from Tolkien, and Tolkien wrote that story under the supervision of a Jesuit, actually. I found that out when I did the studies on uh, Christopher Lee, because Christopher Lee appeared as the evil sorcerer Saruman, um, in that uh, very uh, movie here, or in the, these movies, actually. Yeah, so the Battle of Minas Tirith begins. Yeah, you have clearly depiction of giant, giant creatures um, in comparison to the, to the, yeah, they are not humans, but these are also evil ones, but uh, uh, they are far more bigger and more powerful in size. They can carry big stones. Huh? And also you got a depiction here in that uh, Lord of the Rings of a dragon, of a fiery dragon. And the dragon, we know from that uh, depiction in Revelation 12, uh, the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil and Satan. So that is Satan. That means <laughs> that these giants in the movie Lord of the Rings, they are serving the dragon. Actually, they are carrying a wooden dragon. Yeah, but there is a um, connection between these giant uh, creatures and the dragon. Yeah, how? Uh, of course, that just uh, happening uh, is is uh, happening on random. Yeah, there are many 
of these gigantic creatures in the Lord of the Rings and in, of course in uh, in other uh, stories. And you here have now the witch king of Angmar, the leader of the Nazgul in the Lord of the Rings, who is so powerful that he can even uh, destroy the staff of uh, that uh, apparently good uh, sorcerer called Gandalf. Although the problem is that uh, uh, Oh, I did so many sessions about that. Uh, he's not a good sorcerer also, but you see this is just a distraction here. But of course he's, uh, he's the head of that is riding on the dragon and you have all the biblical reference here of that ah, dragon. Michael, to call a, a sorcerer good would be like calling yeah. one of the popes God. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's great. Yeah. Right? That's, I mean, oh, it's that's... about a holy father. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Brett. Where it clearly says the majority of people, it in Matthew, the majority isn't it in Matthew, of, call no man your father upon the earth. The majority of people still want to, will prefer television instead of reading the Bible. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Of course, of course, yeah. because it's easy to sit there and and watch television set and be yeah. filled with with garbage. It's easy. It's easy. It's yes. not hard. No. But when you get up and you say, "Hey, I'm born again, believer in Christ," mm -hmm. huh, then it's hard because all your friends come against you. Mm -hmm. What? Mm -hmm. What did you just say? Yeah, it's really interesting. You see that you have on the one hand you have the big uh, dragon. It's not fiery red, but you have the big dragon. <laughs> and on the other hand, you got these small humans, and you got, of course, the white horse. is a depiction of uh, purity, and of course, the white horse where Jesus Christ will come back. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's all just uh, blasphemy. Yeah, it's all blasphemy. Yeah. Well, but, they're mixing it all up too, Michael. That's the Jesuits' modus, modus operandi, as they mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what they do. They mix mm -hmm. everything up. They want to confuse you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's just it's all these uh, computer games and all that stuff. You see, even um, Stephanie in, uh, educated me on that uh, uh, item here. And they were also using Fiery Dragon in the Game of Thrones. Yeah, dragons and giants mm -hmm. in the Game of Thrones. Let's take a look. Da, 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 da. So, Game of Thrones. Giants! <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. A non human race considered to be a legend by the inhabitants of the Seven Kingdoms south of the Wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is all. <laughs> you see, this is all just to keep people away from the Bible. The Bible says there were giants in the earth these days and also after the flood. Also after that. And God has smitten them. They have destroyed him. The sons of Anak. He said they are big as a cedar. And, is, and, and have a strength like an ox. Yeah. Deuteronomy says, which were also counted giants as the Anakims, but the Moabites call them Imins. You see, you can make 100 sessions about of giants alone. Yeah? Anakim meaning... Uh, a pre-Canaanite tribe and they will be classified in the Hebrew of uh, Numeri 13, I have not looked it up, uh, as, as a Nephilim. Hmm. Yeah, the Anakim are one of the same titanic race as the Rephaim, Nephilim, Giborim, Tzamtzumim and Imim. Huh? What we have learned? Huh? Titanic, Ik, means uh, a kind of titans. Huh? That's why I would not, not with the knowledge of today, would never have set foot on that ship, yeah, because the Titans, of course, will be drowned in the oh, what's the Greek word? World of the underworld now, um, Hades, huh? Hades, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was supposed that the Titanic would drown. Tete, yeah. And there were so many accounts and legends and myths about the giants. You can't, uh, you, you, you will be surprised. You see, even in German fairy tales, it's called Das Riesenspielzeug from the Brothers Grimm. Yeah, the story of a giant daughter 
um, who has to learn that also small creatures have their uh, meaning. <laughs> yeah, it's an old uh, legend. Yeah, it's an old legend. And I was so glad that I could find an English uh, translation about it. No? One of once the giantess, so the female giant, came out of that castle and was playing in front of the gate and descended the slope into the valley, curious to find what it would be like down below. Hmm. With a few quick steps, she crossed the forest, soon reached the land of the people, Tors Haslach. I think I got a German. No, this is the, yeah, you see, this is German and this is English here. With a few quick steps, she crossed the forest. Soon she reached the land of the people, Tors Haslach, and the towns there and villages and the cultivated fields seemed to her eyes as a strange, yeah, miniature world then. And as now... At her feet she looks down peering, she notices a farmer building his field, the little creature creeps along so strangely, the plow glistens to the sun into the sun so bright and clear. So it's a plow to uh, cultivate the ground. What a nice playing thing, she cries. Ha, ah, I take it home with me. She kneels down, nimbly spreads out her little cloth, and with her hands she feeds on all that stirring there into heaps in the little cloth where she falls, etc. So she's uh, Stealing uh, a plow, yeah? ein Flug in Deutsch, yeah? <laughs> as a plaything. Yeah, because she's a giantess. Yeah, she is a Riesenfräulein. Yeah, uh, Fräulein, you don't say that in German anymore. <laughs> Not in the gender correct the German. Um, it's a it's a young female woman. Uh, uh, woman is always female. It's a young female, which is not married yet. Ah, it's so. Yeah? So that is just a fairy tale here, but you see that also in fairy tales there are giants. Uh -huh. I have to skip it because we do not have so much. The origin of the Anakim, says Wikipedia, is unknown. Oh, I think the Bible has clearly, has clearly has a quite a sure stand on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Deuteronomy also said there was an accounted land of the giants, of course. Yeah, to, like, take a look at uh, Numeri, Book of Numbers. Giants dwelt therein in old time, and the Ammonites called them some Tsumims. In Deuteronomy, and we have another size uh, indication here. Would you like to read it, Brett? Deuteronomy chapter 3, verse 11. Yes. For only one Og king of Bashan remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of Yiram. It is not Rabbath, the children of... <clears throat> it, excuse me. It is not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth thereof it, after the cubit, the cubite of a man. Yeah, of course, they don't tell you that in inch and centimeters, because they were not, was not invented uh, un, until then. But... Um, you have a you have a comparison here nine cubits by four cubits okay deuteronomy 313 says uh, all the region of arab uh, which was called the land of giants so giants everywhere yeah then we come to david and goliath yeah this is the yeah giant yeah goliath is just another name it's a giant and this is David with a sling, who's then uh, penetrating the uh, forehead of the giant and is killing him. And that is, story is not that easy, as you might expect uh, that to be. You see, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. One prime example would be David and Goliath bread. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So there is no questioning that uh, there must be a second time when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men. Don't ask me why God has allowed that. Maybe to show that it's, it's absolutely futile, uh, that uh, some people always will fail for all these fallen ones. I do not know. But after that means after the flood. So after the flood, a big prime example would be Goliath. Hmm? So the question is, how big were the giants in the earth in those days? After the flood. We do not know because we do not have any comparison before the flood. But after the flood, uh, at least we have this nine cubic and uh, by four cubics. So question, uh, in the video I found, how big were the giants in the earth in those days? After, it, it must 
be after that uh, in those days this is a was a lung somebody says this is a human lung it's been a dna a gigantic comet always hitting the earth it was called wooden collision sure you have to believe that uh, that theory that uh, there was a comet and all the stuff yeah but nevertheless if you really have these artifacts these bones and these organs and so you can really imagine that these were were of giant sizes yeah and um so it's not it's not quite easy to uh, to to have a, a correct number i think but uh, at least they were much uh, much bigger than you would expect them to be and much bigger than any man can get so that means that they have been messed around uh, yeah with the with the code of human life yeah to know how tall these are in the bible um that's a problem here because the bible just speaks out after the flood this were nine cubits by four cubits it does not say about the size before the flood and uh, now this website in my humble opinion makes a big big mistake because he's switching on bread to the book of enoch And we know that we did the session on Enoch, that there were two Enochs. And uh, this is not a divine inspired book. Therefore, it's not in the 66 books of the King James Bible. Why? Yeah. Well, you see, for comparison here, Enoch says there were 3,000 uh, tall. Yeah. And um, they feared the god Jupiter. And god Jupiter is a, is a Roman god. Actually, it's the Roman equivalent to the Greek Zeus. And that's a problem because uh, this was happening quite before uh, somebody would have to fear uh, Jupiter, I think. And also we got a problem that uh, you have uh, seen big skeletons around the world, for example, the Cardiff giant. But our system at Wikipedia tells us he was 10 foot tall, a 3000 pound uh, petrified man in 1869. And uh, then... Um, it was an hawks, yeah. It was a fake, yeah. So I can't decide if that was a fake or not, yeah. Because uh, I do not own the science, bread. They own the science, yeah. So I'm, I, I can't take any skeletons as a comparison because I cannot uh, um, verify from here if they are correct or not. I'm not an archaeologist, okay. The problem is that uh, if you really go down to the book of these all. Um, book of enoch and uh, all this uh, apocryphica um, i think we got a major problem um, here are some interesting remarks mud fossils and velikovsky and mines in collision um, there are certain interesting books i guess yeah but you have to don't have to fall for their science oh because that guy has a title that does not mean that he's speaking the truth because maybe he was indoctrinated too so the question arises when we have uh, uh, the comparison of uh, Goliath, for example, um, in the first Samuel 17, 4, um, he was six cubits and a span. Which means, if, if that is correct, I can't tell you because I'm not an expert in size comparison when it comes down to before Christ. Yeah? They say it, he was nine feet six inches. They say he was six, he was nine feet and six inches. And I said, Goliath, that's very interesting because Goliath remembers me of an old uh, series on television called Knight Rider. <laughs> because they had a big truck also, which is called Goliath. Yeah, it's the same Goliath as David and Goliath, of course. Knight Rider means a shadowy flight into the dangerous world of a man who does not exist. Michael Knight, a long loan on a crusade to champion the cause of the innocent, the helpless, the powerless, in a world of criminals who operate above the law. And in that intro here, not in the German version, because in Germany you're not allowed to know anything. In Germany it just means, oh, a car, a computer, a man. Yeah, he's uh, fighting against injustice. Yeah, but in America you know that uh, he is a knight. <laughs> he's on a crusade. Yeah, and he has something to do with innocence. And I mean, I said, okay, in a world of criminals who operate above the law, who could that be, Brett? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is really something, Michael. Uh, just right in our faces in, in our yeah, you normal see, the programming. The people are above the law it? who have invented that law, the laws. Yeah, who are yeah, above right. the law, of or the course. diplomats. So and we're immunity. talking about the Romans, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and I said that's very interesting because Innocent was the one who was uh, 
yeah, having the crusade in 1202, the fourth crusade, that the Pope called innocent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and he's, right. he's directing the knights on a crusade. And Michael Knight is a lone loner on a crusade for the cause of the innocent. Huh? Interesting. Huh? If you like. Isn't that interesting, Michael? <laughs> if you go to the. Uh the the House of Representatives in the District of Columbia, the United States of America, mm -hmm. you will find a bust of Innocent the Third hanging up in there, mm -hmm. and you also find another bust of uh, of other other popes as well hanging up in our. Uh, House of Representatives. Why on earth would they do that, Michael? Hmm. If not to program us. <laughs> you know? Innocent the third, yeah. Oh, not news. I can't find that. Just it's right at the top. Right at the top. You just missed it. Right there. Right here. Yeah, click oh. on it. Uh huh. Okay, relief portrait. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. It's right in. It's in the House of Representatives, hanging mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, over the gallery doors of the. Ah, yeah. I see. Okay. Mm hmm. See, they even depict uh, Moses too. Look at Moses. Mm hmm. He's got two horns like a lamb, but speaks as a dragon. A evil, wicked place this place is. There's another pope down there. Yeah, I, I don't know. It, mm. it just, it's, it's mind-boggling what they mm. do in there. Oh, and look at that. They even have some Egyptian guy there, too. Mm. Yeah. How fitting. Mm. Yeah, so you see, that <laughs> they are just fooling us. Yeah, and Goliath, of course, uh, a giant. Yeah, who was then uh, uh, drowning in the flood? Do you remember? Huh? There were giants in the earth these days. Yeah, and this was the cause of the big flood. Of course, what do we expect? What the outcome is of the destruction of that uh, Goliath truck, which was a giant? Huh? Sure. <laughs> into the underworld yeah. along with the titanic huh mm -hmm. yeah yeah so nine feet and six inches would come up to be two meters and 90 centimeters and that is uh, the f tallest people who ever walked the earth uh, human was uh, eight feet and 11. so goliath was nine feet and six inches he was uh, taller than the, the the biggest man so he was not that uh, ultimate size of a giant uh, at the size of a cedar he was a smaller giant but he was a giant yeah if you compare that man here with the eight feet 11 yeah 20 centimeters uh, uh, smaller than that giant yeah with his father average size yeah then you have a, maybe a comparison about david and goliath and you have to expect that uh, Goliath was a little bit taller than him. Okay. So that was my intention here to really see that uh, if you really doubt about the existence of giants before the flood, then you have to doubt the existence of that David and Goliath uh, story in the Bible. And that David and Goliath story you will find in the first book of Samuel, chapter 17 and 4. And clearly... Um, he was depicted here as uh, being six cubits and a span. And it's also very interesting, we can't, of course, due to the time, um, we can't uh, uh, read that entire. Um, maybe we shall start at the, uh, at the speech of David to the Philistine, so to that uh, Goliath. Uh, maybe we can, uh, we can, we can see um, that it was the Lord which has smitten him and uh, which had the Lord, uh, which was deciding that uh, Goliath will fall. So, would you care to read verse 45 to 46? Okay. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou com 
Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the Amor, uh, excuse me, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give to the Clarkies of the host, or excuse me, Carkies of the coast of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, and all that the earth, all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Goliath was destroyed uh, that the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, Brett. <laughs> mm -hmm. hmm. And then we have to think about the verse 49, Brett. Mm -hmm. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his forehead that the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell upon the face of the earth. Yeah. Interesting that it happened into his forehead, huh? There where you think that the brains are. And uh, also interesting when you compare that with the book of Revelation, with the number of the beast in their hand or their forehead, if I remember correctly, Brett. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? Yeah, you see the forehead. You can also say the brain or the minds. It's like, uh, yeah, it was written in their in their consciousness, in their mm -hmm. conscience. Yeah, Revelation fourteen. There it is. If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead, there it is. That would be my reference to Goliath. Yeah. So when we know that David was on a mission, <coughs> not mission, when David has a, has a task and an order from God to smite this Philistine called Goliath, or this Goliath, this giant, um, then he was uh, crushing also the belief in the people so that they knew that there is a God in Israel. So the forehead has something to do with your faith, with your belief, with your brains. But it's just my uh, common sense. No? First Samuel, that's a book where they say, where God says, uh, they have rejected me that I should not reign over them. Hmm. Yeah, so you have uh, certain amounts of giants, and we know that uh, even that small giant was about uh, a size which is far more exceeding any human uh, size which we have ever seen here on this earth. Yeah, so there is a plenty of giants everywhere. It's even a valley of giants in Joshua 18:16, a valley of giants. Yeah, called Rafa. In the sense of invigorating a giant, a giant Rafa Raphaim. The valley of the giants. Yeah, so there were big, big people, and you can assume that uh, they were uh, seen also uh, at these Anakims, these uh, pre Canaanites, in the land of the people where they eat uh, themselves, eat people. Yeah? Giants in the in the old times before the flood, they were being mentioned as Hebrews five three o three, which means a feller, a bully, a tyrant, a giant. Yeah. So, but these giants, um, they have a different uh, um, uh, numerology here. This these giants are called uh, Rafa, but they are giants. But the, I think, Brett, the Bible clearly. Um, differences between the giants before the flood and the giants after the flood when I look on the ESOT software with the Hebrew origin of the word. Hmm. 
So I suggest that these giants for, before the flood they were even more enormous because I have to assume that the, the vegetation and the oxygen in the air, everything was uh, was was uh, different than after the flood. Um, that would also explain then uh, giant creatures before the yeah, flood. such as dinosaurs. I would avoid mentioning the name dinosaurs, but yeah, that's, that's, that's quite like it, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's just we have to use your common sense. If the Bible depicts of giant creatures before the flood, then uh, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But you see that... Well, these... you know, there's another reason, Michael, why uh, we don't like history so much in general, because that was an awfully long time ago. And, you know, we have to trust what we've been told, don't we? Yeah, no, we, 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 we will get good grades for just being repetitive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you just say what the state wants you to say. Yeah, the state does not want you to think of your own. The state does not want you to have common sense. The state wants that you obey, that you're mm -hmm. a right. slave of the state, that you're a tax slave. That's what the, slave, what the state wants, to put you in a mental captivity, that you don't think out of the box, that you just think, oh, yes, everything is, is, is so and so, because my teacher says this, because that my, uh, my boss says Michael, that. Michael, the state has become God. Yeah, the state, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a replacement religion. Yeah, it's a big exactly. brother system. Oh, Big Brother takes care of you. We got all the professors, doctors, educated people. We also have the elite. Yeah. Can I remind you that uh, in the ancient times when Jesus Christ was walking on the earth, um, they were the high priests and scribes. So the scribes were the people who were then educated. They could write and read. And not the majority of people in the Roman Empire, they could not read or write. They were just slaves. It was not... Uh, meant that they could read or write because they just had to work. They don't want to ask questions. And nowadays, when the majority of people can write and read, of course, they have to read and write false history. So that they don't come to the conclusion that we are coming because we believe the Bible, because there is clearly evidence for the, uh, for the Bible. Here's the evidence for the biblical flood. And the cause of the biblical flood, once again, was not uh, one uh, thing, that one event that occurred, uh, which was a minor thing, but it was that guy, or that thing, man began to multiply on the fate of the earth, and daughters were born to them, that sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, so they were good-looking, attractive, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Yeah, and these sons of God, we have talked about that quite literally before, yeah, these sons of God, Yeah, took them wives means they uh, were having uh, intercourse, sexual intercourse, took them wives means sexual intercourse or to know them. And the Lord says, my spirit shall not always strive with man, so for that he also is flesh and flesh only, for his days shall be 120 years, so this is limited. So everybody who tells you, I yeah, know somebody who is 150 years old can't be according to the Bible. Yeah, but that is... The explanation here, the verse 4, there were giants on the earth on those days, so the offspring, when the sons of God came in unto the daughter of man, so they were their offspring, they are children of these uh, sons of God. And of course, these sons of God were the ori original cause of the big flood. Sorry, Brett, it's your turn. Could you oh, read uh, yeah. the book of Job, uh, chapter 1, verses 6 and 7, please? Okay, sure. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Yes. So therefore, the sons of God does not mean they are good. They, they mean, just means there is a, it's just the sons of God. There is a certain title of certain very important uh, divine beings. Yeah, so Satan came among them. Satan is also a son of God. Only Jesus Christ is the anointed one. Only Jesus Christ is the only begotten son. And he's the one who sits on the right side of God. But Satan is the accuser. Yeah? So Satan is also a son of God. So that means that these... Uh, sons of God, yeah, these uh, Satan worshippers came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, mighty men, 
Ja, Giants. Giants in the earth. And their giants only appeared when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and bare children to them. So this is the offspring. These are the children of fallen angels. Giants. Yeah, so in verse 12 of the book of Job, which is called in German Hiob, which is very interesting because in German there is a certain phrase called Hiob's Botschaft, which means a message of Job, which is depicted as uh, the ultimate uh, evil, ultimate mess, ultimate destruction and, and terror, what you can imagine. Yeah, so it would be a mass murderer or something like that, would be a Hiob's Botschaft or a message of Job. So that's very interesting that uh, you have the... Um, the cause of Luke 4 in that uh, chapter, Brad, would you care to read that uh, book of Job, uh, verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 12, please? Sure. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Yeah, that is my explanation for Luke 4, 4, 4, when he, the devil is showing Jesus Christ on a high mountain, all the power of the glory of all the kingdoms of the world, because it has been given to him in the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 12, when the Lord said unto Satan, all that he hath, so all material possessions, all the material possession that he hath is in thy power. That's it. That is my conclusion. That was my conclusion years ago. And I said that is so important that you really know the book of Job. You should really, if you have not read the book of Job um, already, you are very much uh, uh, asked to do so. Thanks so much for having me. Signing off and Maranatha handing it over to my beloved brother, Brett. Thank you, Michael. And uh, yeah, this uh, a very difficult subject, actually. Uh, not easy because we go back into the ancient antiquity, but for good reason. You know, this is this is a study that we all need to look into on our own independently and verify. That's that's kind of the whole purpose of being a uh, biblical researcher and and uh, and to do these things. So. I hope to catch up with you next time. God bless and Maranatha.